Hi, it's Toby from Heavyweight MMA. Jenna Fabian has traveled around the world training and fighting different combat sports. She started Muay Thai and fighting in Thailand, even winning a WMC World Middleweight title while she was at it. Now she's fighting out of an organization called PFL in the States, and she's continuing her quest to be the best in combat sports. Fighting out of CKB and representing New Zealand, Jenna Fabian has a lot of good stories and good ideas about combat sports. Please have a listen. Man to man, combat hand to hand, horns locked, ready for the last stand, elbow drops, kicks fade bang. If I connect you, levitate, better settle mate, lights out, knocked out by the heavyweight. Hi, this is Toby from Heavyweight MMA. Today with Jenna Fabian, Muay Thai turned MMA fighter. How are you? Good, thanks. How are you, Toby? Good, good to finally catch you. And only a month after your big win against Julia Budd in PFL uh, in May, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, yes, in May. I forget. <laughs> I forget that May six it was. Yeah. Yeah, and how how was it to to get back in the winning circle? Because you had a you had a, the previous fight in PFL was a difficult one. Uh, you fought against uh, what was her name? The um, sorry, uh, against Kayla Harrison, right? And now now you've come back with a win. So feeling good about it. Yeah, yeah, it was a good one to get under my belt. Um, uh, you know, of course, a lot of things that to take away from it as well to move into the next one. Um, but uh, overall, just happy to beat um, a caliber of opponent like that for sure. Yeah, it's awesome. And you've been uh, and you've been based it in CKB now rather than being over in the states, right? Yeah, yep. So uh, since my last fight, come back. Um, home to New Zealand um, and, and prep so yeah there was a bit of uh, a delay in me getting back just with a lot of issues actually like our country being shut down uh, and locked out for a while and then uh, some visa issues um, with my with my visa um, and my working visa over in the state so I had to wait till that uh, got sorted before I could leave and then uh, get back into the states again so a couple of things but uh finally made it home <laughs> it's been a while that's it and and you've been traveling all around the world right like in training you've trained in thailand extensively obviously for muay thai uh you're also in the states so i think you mentioned something about aka and, and team couture right extreme couture um yep. how does it feel to then uh go back to back home does it feel more grounded for you like more like you know comfortable yeah 100 percent. home's home and there's no place like it and um no, no other team in the world like ours, and I can say that with the experience I've had and and what I've seen and 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 been out there. And there's some great, there's some great gyms and coaches and training partners, of course, um, elsewhere, but uh, nowhere quite like the stable that we've built and the leaders that like our coaches, you know, Eugene Berryman, Doug Winey, um, and all our all our coaches at CKB that kind of just bring it all together and make the team about each other you know that's what I think um is one of our superpowers uh and and uh how we step out into enemy territory or step out into the world and fight so hard and 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 have the success that we do is because of um how we're built over here and and what's kind of ingrained in us so it's a very powerful thing I feel um and I'm lucky to come from that. So yeah, I do. I do love um, being being at home at this time and being able to be back finally. That's it. And Eugene, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, is actually a relative of yours, right? Like a blood relative. Yeah, yeah, that's my cousin. Yeah. So, so do you find any extra pressure from him being a relative? Like, does he feel more inclined to, you know, to drive you a bit more or what? Uh, yeah, all of that. <laughs> He's there's definitely you know favors or um in the best way possible like he's just wants the best out of me and knows me um and just make sure that I'm you know held accountable and um achieving achieving what I should be getting the most out of it also um though some days you know you in that's what you want out of any coach um is you know someone to be able to hold you accountable and and just just push you past your limits because um you know just to get the, the most and best out of you and would you be able to talk a little bit on uh some of these bigger gyms in the states that you've trained in like you, aka and extreme couture were two of them right um 
Can you talk on like what's the environment at those places like and what what's the benefits of those sort of gyms out of interest? Yeah, so um I trained at Extreme um last year um because that was during the pandemic time and I wasn't able to the, the PFL had set it up where I stayed in based in America between fight one and fight two just because of all the the way that things were. So um yeah, it worked out and I um, I think just with, with where it's based in Vegas, like there's such big mega gyms and um, it can be quite transparent. Like you've got a lot of people coming in and out and there's, um, and people are just, yeah, using the bodies, I guess, um, so much. And there is a core stable base of fighters based in Vegas and at gyms like Extreme. Um, so so once you establish establish yourself uh, amongst the like core fight team, you can you can find that within those gyms. But um, it can be like I said, quite hard because people are so, uh, you know, it's just like transparent. People are coming in and out constantly for their different yeah. fights. Sort of. So I think that's like the big major difference. But uh, yeah, great, great, great set of uh, partners and things like that over there, and you can always. Um, you know, uh, come across great work and um, some really good coaches there too that are that are like still very supportive of me. And whenever I do go back and forth, like I'm able to get in with them. So you know, Ray Seffel, Nate Pettit, um, John Wood, Mike Pyle are like people that I've um, established like a really good uh, uh, relationship and, and partnership with since, since my time kind of going back in and out of Vegas. So um yeah no some 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 good solid people out there too but um like I said I think the transparency of the location and um and, and the place kind of can yeah you can kind of get lost or wrapped up in that um in that scene a bit if you if you don't know your way or you don't come in with um with a team or kind of knowing people yeah yeah and um, what would you say people could benefit from? Because obviously there's a few things you're mentioning that are, that are you know, particular to, to CKB. Um, but over there, what could people pick up? Is it like they can pick up more wrestling because it's a bit more of a wrestling-based country? Or what sort of things would people pick up? Or what would they benefit from if they did leave New Zealand, Australia or something and went over there? Yeah, uh, you know, America having a, a strong uh, base and culture in the wrestling. Um, I think that's a really big um, benefit to, to training over there. I know that I spent extensive amount of time on my wrestling. I was wrestling at one point five days a week straight, and it was so tough on the body. But it got that that grind and that grit of that kind of work. I'm um, really really elevated my game and and helped me um, to this point now. So um, definitely, yeah, like a whole array of uh, skill sets and fighters and and different programs I, I think I think that's um a good benefit and like I said there's so many bodies and different fighters from all over coming in and out uh so you can always trust and get um you know good good looks uh over there as well but um, I think in comparison to CKB like we're levels above in terms of the striking and just the 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 IQ of um, what our system has, like in comparison to the rest of the world, that we we have a definite solid foundation and system um, when it comes to our style of striking. That I think and and have experienced is levels above um, a lot of places. Um, but that's not to say, you know, we. I think people have this uh, misconception that CKB is purely a striking gym. We wrestle and grapple more than anything to like level up those those imbalances and holes um, and com compared to other other gyms and countries that have more of a base in the other in the other arts, you know. So um, yeah, and I and I also think that we're very spoiled, you know, being abroad. Um, uh multiple times now over the last couple of years like everything's under one roof whereas um overseas you kind of have to seek after your specific work um depending on who you're fighting or what you need or um where you need to level up like 
not everything is as accessible like you have to kind of look around and work with different partners or coaches or teams um to get like the work that you may need so I feel like that's where um we're really spoiled for choice on our end because we have uh a lot of our bases covered all under one roof do, just out of question, do, do Eugene and the other coaches, do they pick your brains at all about things that you picked up overseas? Because I know so many of your guys have spent time overseas getting those different looks and probably seeing the way different people train from different countries. And I just wonder if they take advantage of that and bring any of those sort of drills into the into the fray at, um, at, at CKB. Uh, I think we all share our knowledge and different things that we've learned, like amongst the team and things like that and different things were picked up but um depending on who's fighting and in general where the team is at and and uh the things we the holes that we need to um cover a bit more that can uh, i think we've got like you know our coaches have a general um basis covered and what what where we're at as a team and, and in general and then obviously like um certain individuals need to may need to work on one aspect of it more than others uh so that's where our individual work will come into play like under the under you know the one roof but um i think i think we just naturally kind of share what you know what things different things we've learned from different people and things like that and um but like everyone's everyone that is fighting at like the highest levels amongst our gym and even all our coaches have been abroad and have uh seen and been all over the world and fought and done camps and things like that so um everyone's kind of got a general understanding of like how most places work so everyone's quite experienced and well versed I feel like um in terms of like uh other sides of the world and what other gyms do but I don't think that really factors too much into our program yeah and then you've got uh, you've got a history I mean CKB has got a history of thinkers you know like from the past with with uh Lolo who used to like get tapes and study to help race FO and then, and then down to Eugene and these guys are real thinkers, right? So they, they research things by way of watching fights and probably watching training and everything else, which then, then benefits all you guys. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. They, they're masterminds at that and, and like do extensive research and, and video on um, different, not just different like opponents and fighters, but, their team and their coaches and how the fighters before them and and other other members of their team perform and what's the general kind of tendencies and things like that so from that end like we're really uh yeah we've got some true masterminds behind us that uh you know that cover cover every every basis i think in terms of like our opponents you know not just that the coaches the other fighters and their team in general to see you know what their tendencies and things like that are you must have a million people coming down from different parts of the world now to try and benefit from from the knowledge there right yeah yeah we do um you know have many people from all over um coming in now you know something that's like since the rise of um our boys and 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 the gym um you know having people frequent to our side of the world but at the same time we're still in our little corner of the world so if you really do want to level up and be under our team and banner and system or take you know learn from that like it's it's a big effort to to come all the way over to new zealand from europe from america from you know that side of the the globe and 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 not just get there but situate yourself base yourself be amongst a different culture be amongst um such a such a big gym you know so um for those that do make it over and kind of 
experience it or test it out or base themselves here like um it's really admired because it's not um like it's an easy transition to do so or as accessible as like america or you know europe and things like that so um yeah it's it's a it's a special few so that few that really do um you know we got people all over going we want to come there we want to come there but not many people like actually commit and make it out so when those ones do um you know that's that's a huge step and it obviously shows their commitment and um their how serious they are about being on our side because it's different <laughs> Yeah. And you can't just like come in for a week and expect to learn the system, right? It's something that takes a long, long time. I I just remember talking to Cam uh, Battle Giraffe, you know, he was, uh, he was saying that, yeah, you can't, people come in, I'm going to do a week there before for a camp or something. It just doesn't work because it's like a, it's a long-term learning, right? Yeah, absolutely. The way our system is set up, you, people don't quite understand. It's not, you're not going to come for a week or two and uh, gain this, you know, whole new outlook on on your game or fighting. Like it's something that's really ingrained and takes a lot of time and it's quite like monotonous and tedious. Like the things that we teach and the system that our coaches um, impart and it takes a lot of time and they might seem like really small details, but those small details are like um, what sets us levels above uh, the rest of the world so it's not that's the thing and that's why I say like it's quite admirable when people come over from other parts of the world and base themselves and decide to be there because it's um, it's a process it's a long process um, not just in setting up in a new place of course that's always massive but the system in which we have and 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 what you've got to learn and take on and and kind of spend the time, dedicate your time to to just gaining even a bit of uh, understanding of that. But it'll make you it'll make you better. But it's a long game for sure. Yeah, I came down had a look. Uh, I was down there and I came dropped in. I'd met Dan over here in Macau fighting, and uh, I came down to watch Dan train before. And it was around when there was a sparring class, and it was a real depth of talent there. It was a big room, and like I've mentioned before in the in some interviews. Uh, you see like Dan and Israel were in there, but they, if you didn't know who they were, they wouldn't stand out particularly. So it's a nice depth of talent that, you know, there's a lot of good guys there. And as some of them have said, you turn up one day and think you're going to have an easy run and you're not on your game. Uh, amateur guys are going to hurt you a bit. So you, you really have to be on your game all the time, right? Yeah. A hundred percent, man. Like, um, so I just got back last week and uh, our sparring days are Saturdays and, and Mondays. And um, I was watching, we, we split it up like we have our kickboxers sparring first and then the MMA guys sparring after and I was in there watching the kickboxers uh, do all their rounds and man there's some people from when I left like last year a few months ago to now that are just night and day like incredible and, and exactly like you said if you didn't know who these bigger names are in the MMA world they wouldn't stand out there's just such an incredible depth of talent in our amateurs and in our um even amongst our pros that uh you know obviously locally we know who they are but that are just on that cusp of of breaking into the big time and that yeah give the top guys in our in our gym a huge run and and yeah like and you know even within even within the rounds or a sparring session like it happened to me I felt great for two rounds um and then got absolutely hammered the very next round you know because depending who you go with and and the looks and the like I said yeah like I said the depth of um talent that we've got and these of these like not lesser known or unknown names it's it's the people that get um you know the Brads, the Dan's, the Israels, um, and you know, and the Kai's all ready to step out on that stage. Um, so huge depth and so much more to come from our gym. Yeah, it's kind of I I, I liked uh, what Dan was saying before when there was talks of relocating some of the people over to the states during that COVID period, and he was saying that 
when you thought about it, it's not just like you get this small team to go over and it's got it covered. You can't really relocate because there's such a big infrastructure and such a big group of people that are actually all filtering in and helping people. Right? It's, it's like people that are in the gym and their families and everyone together that, you know, there's a, it's a big ecosystem sort of thing rather than just, uh, you know, these handful of good fighters training together. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's it. It's like, it's actually not so much, uh, yeah, the, the top names or whatever, they're all training amongst each other. They all individually have a whole, you know, other set of guys preparing them. Um, and those are the guys that, uh, you know, are the, are the real kind of backbones behind a lot of these boys' success. So, uh, yeah, it just, it just wasn't going to be at all an easy transition say that had to happen and our and our country wasn't progressing forward and and opening up and things like that it just uh, it would have been a really difficult time and then yeah like a lot of our guys have families young families and things like that um and so that would have been a really a really there just would have been a lot involved in that transition so you know though it was a serious thought at one point, like it was probably just as well that we were able to make it work um, by staying back and slowly the country kind of opened up and um, made it, you know, we were able to do stuff in the background to, to make it happen in that, during that period. That's it. Uh, you mentioned before in, in uh, your sparring that you're doing uh, that there's a kickboxing session. You, you started off in the kickboxing, right, with... Um, with uh, Thai boxing, yeah, and, and spent some time in Thailand. You won a, an Australian title and a WMC World Middleweight title, which is a you know one of the big known belts, one of the sought after belts. Um, how did you find that experience training in Thailand? Yeah, it was it was, uh, it was what got me personally, um, you know, into the sport and into this lifestyle and world in the first place. And um, yeah, I, I just grew a love uh, for Muay Thai. Um, and, and the art itself and and what it was doing for me all those years ago and getting the endorphins going, learning a new skill and applying myself to something. I, I you know, initially didn't think I would uh, take it professionally or fight professionally, um, but it eventuated that way uh, through just the work and and um, progressed into a passion. Um, You're a naturally natural athlete anyway, by the sound of it, right? Like you were doing very well in track and field and everything, and some of those disciplines and strengths kind of carry into sporting endeavors, right? Yeah, hundred percent. So you know that that natural kind of uh, discipline and 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 and, and uh, work ethic and things like that was. Uh, already ingrained in me it was just a new skill to learn and a new challenge to learn and and um something that really caught my interest and attention at the time um enough to like want to take it seriously and dedicate myself to it so um yeah that that was how it started and obviously like the setting of thailand and um and and being based over there and and just yeah, the, the people that I met and whatnot, like a lot of expats and internationals from all over and being located on a on a tropical island was just like, it all kind of went hand in hand. And um, I was at a point in my life at that stage, like where I could do that and um, explore that. And, and, and yeah, it just it progressed from there. And then over the years, like kind of later on picked up um, and got into the MMA side, but, uh, yeah, Muay Thai is definitely uh, my first love and an experience in time in my life that, um, you know, uh, I wouldn't take back and um, some some great years and really, really set me up to, you know, where I'm at now in my fighting career. Yeah, Dan mentioned that, like, uh, that fighter lifestyle that people don't always talk about, like, it's not just about winning and making money and that, that just you know, getting the opportunities to travel to different countries, meet different people, you know, um, do different training with different looks, like you mentioned as well, all these things kind of go hand in hand. And yeah, not everyone really talks about that. That's one of the big benefits of, of fighting at a higher level, right? Yeah, yeah, I think that's probably the biggest, um, for me personally, like one of the biggest uh, benefits and rewards and most, yeah, most rewarding 
part of it is um, the places you go, places you would never anticipate or plan to go outside of, I think, the sport. And then the people that you meet and the experiences you have from that, it's um, those things are like, yeah, we could all each write our own individual book, I think, on like <laughs> all the things we've done. Um, the people that uh, and the experiences that have come from those things. So yeah, it really like as cliche as it sounds, it really is. Uh, you know, after so being uh, in it for a, for a few years now, like it really is like the experiences you have and the places it takes you, and the things that come from it that I think are, um, are like really rich in um yeah and and, and experience and um and the journey and whatnot yeah it's amazing hey just looking at my notes here i see that your you mentioned your background was uh samoan german maori european scottish Uh, it's a big mix there yeah fruit salad (laughs) fruit salad is there any of those cultures that you feel particularly like uh drawn to or or more involved in like example do you speak speak um tereo and or, or Samoan or, or any of these things? Yeah, so my mother um, is Samoan German um, and people might find that weird, but there's on this side of the world, like there's a lot of German Samoan uh, mix. Uh, um, just with the Germans at the time of World War II invading the islands. And so I think on our side of the world, it's a lot more common to have uh, German Samoans uh, that that mix so that's my mother mother's side and my father's Maori um, and of Scottish uh, European heritage uh, but my dad speaks fluent Maori uh, I know words I'm not um, fluent at all but um, I just wasn't we, we weren't kind of at, at like taught that at school and I wasn't around that side enough to like uh, pick up um, the language but it's never too late to learn (laughs) and I intend to a bit more um, over the next while. Uh, But my mother's um, closely with that side and my grandmother um, who immigrated here to New Zealand and raised our family and had her uh, uh, her kids here. Uh, So yeah, I understand and speak that a lot more um, than, than any other. Of the of the languages, my aunties and my, my mom's sisters, a lot of them, a couple of them are still based in Germany, so they speak fluent German. We were taught when we were younger, but because we weren't, we didn't use it as much, um, and just didn't practice it. Like I again, I only know words, um, but uh, uh, yeah, like our family kind of um, speak all sorts of languages. German and some one are the main ones. Yeah, but that's cool. That's cool. And like you said, it's never too late to learn, really. I've been like kind of the last few years trying to pick up Chinese because I'm in China and it's, I can do it. It's difficult, but slowly getting there, you know, and I'm older. So you'll be, you'll yeah. be working better than me. <laughs> it's so important to like, you have to be uh, speaking it often and around people that obviously speak the language so you can um, practice it and, and actually like, dedicate the time it needs to just uh, even understanding lingo and uh basics you know everyday basics i think um yep. you know it's it's really important picking up a new language but i'm thankful that we were taught languages as a kid because i've been able to pick up other languages you know throughout my travels and um especially in fighting and stuff like a lot easier and just in the different places we go like like i'm pretty like a I wouldn't say I'm fluent in Thai, but I'm pretty well versed in Thai towards the end because I spent like a few years there and it got to a point where I was actually able to conversate and understand with the locals and things like that. And there's different like dialects and whatnot. So I think that helped <laughs> and transferred all that yeah, over. For sure it would. And what you said makes hundred percent sense. Like you can't you can't learn a language in isolation. It has to be an interaction with people and you've got to use it as a you know a form of communication. You've got to get in front of people and say hello and start talking. And if, even if you feel a bit stupid, it's a, that's how you learn, right? Actually putting it into practice. It's the same as fighting. You can't just train on your own, punching a bag or something. You actually have to do it with people. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, 
how you, that's how you get better anyway and level up a lot quicker. Exactly. So, yeah, yeah, no, but the, yeah, the language, it's never too late. You just got to, I feel like it is important to be around it and, 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 you know, yeah, conversate and hear things and, and then be able to like, yeah, converse often with the language that you're trying to pick up. But yeah, Chinese, Chinese I'd imagine is a hard one, but I think, um, but it's so useful. And like, I wish oh, I- Super hard to be honest, because most the most difficult part of it, which people know is because it's tonal, you know, you can say something that sounds the same in English, up tone, down tone, doesn't matter. It doesn't change the word here. You change the word completely. But the thing is people are forgiving of a foreigner to say a word with the wrong tone. They put it in context and they understand what you mean. So it's all right. Uh, right. Yeah. Probably yeah, the same in the Thai. The Thai is tonal too. So it'll be the same style, right? And that was a whole nother like level of the language. Um, once I got kind of, once I was there for a while, um, learning like one word can mean five different things, like you said, depending on the tone and pitch in which you say it. Um, so yeah, that, that was really um, interesting. But um, again, because you can be around it and converse and whatnot often, like you can, you can pick those things up a lot quicker. And, you know, being a foreigner coming into their country, like they actually really appreciate it when you do make that effort to, learn the nuances and things like that of um and and like you said like they can forgive you for little mistakes <laughs> yeah. and whatnot and actually, people are happier man people don't always know but most i mean most races are happier that you're making an effort to actually learn something about their culture because it's not easy it's not easy and they, they do appreciate they might laugh at you sometimes but it's it's all in good sort of gesture yeah yeah they appreciate it for sure so yeah. now jenna yeah, i've got um pretty- I've got a limited amount of time. So I've got, a, I've got 10 questions I've been asking people lately. Uh, some of them are normal and then a couple of silly questions to finish and, uh, and then I'll, I'll be off. Uh, just short answers, don't be too, de- too detailed. Just uh, I'm going to compile them together with all the fighters eventually once I get a lot of them. Okay. Oh, cool. Sure. Okay. Uh, first fight, you know, you guys are all uh, pretty you know, aware of your body and training and I think you can pass a lot of that on to people. So what's your tips for training and motivation just for general people? tips and motivation for general people uh just just find something that you enjoy and take that first step like don't don't overcomplicate it or um or try to achieve you know too much too soon like that's how things can like kind of peter off when you come out with the hits and a roar and can't maintain so just try one thing that um can assist you towards that or one thing that you want it can be as basic as just showing up or having a making a good morning routine um or planning to get more sleep or something like that just start off with one thing that's very attainable and um that you can build off i'd say cool uh second one uh what's your tips for true health because health can mean a variety of things right whether it's mental body diet everything so what's your tips for true health true health honestly i think it's like mental a lot of it is mental and spiritual so um i think just a lot of you know positive talk um and positive mindset i think can um really you know you can train the house down physically um and even you know uh, get your diet right, which are all very key um, components to, to health and they all factor in. But I think, um, you know, if you can just start with like positive self-talk, positive affirmations, um, you know, changing the way that your outlook on things that can definitely help um, just prolong, uh, you know, long-term success with health. I think that's a a major one um but yeah starting with real basic things like drinking more water and things like that like the essences of life and like what our body runs on and requires that those things can be easily fixed and easily incorporated um and i think people try to do too much uh like look too much into sciences and things like that and that's all valid and great and um you know uh necessary and has its place as well but we forget about like the core essence of things like sleep like drinking enough water 
like having a good routine, like those things, I think the first thing should be established. Yeah, it's true. Uh, any street fight stories? <laughs> yeah, that's how I that's how I started fighting, actually. Um, but not not because I was um, the one initiating. I think I was always uh, defending myself. But um, yeah, like if you ask my <laughs> and if my my girls and stuff from that time, my 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 like friends I grew up with and my cousins <laughs> told you I was I was always the one like jumping into things or defending someone or or getting picked on which is funny but just I think girls in New Zealand man like and people in New Zealand in general we're just like such a we're such a hearty country everyone's just down to scrap <laughs> and like if there's something popped off like because we don't because guns and stuff aren't legal everyone just knows how to fight or like likes to fight and so um that's definitely how it started for me yeah um my first fight was in high school a girl yeah like let me out and then um I had a I had a plate of food in my hand like I had an apple in my hand and like this was during lunch time so I was walking from the, from the lunchroom and I just biffed an apple at her face and then and then just punched her shade in the nose and she went rolling down a hill like because we we're on a, a steep driveway and then it all just put in this big riot popped off then and that was my first fight and then like because I didn't like I obviously came out better off but I did the most damage but because this girl initiated it like we both got so down so that's kind of I guess how my fighting career started but yeah there were a lot of street street fights when, when my sister and I and cousins started like clubbing and things like that it, yeah thinking about it wasn't like it's not a proud moment but um I always seem to be the one having a either defend myself or defend my <laughs> defend my sister or my cousin so that's all how it kind of started for me well that takes us to the next question what's the best street fight technique um, hang on you just blacked out for a second i think we got a message here street fight technique oh i i i personally like the hold the hair and the l uppercut so that that worked for me yeah that's how a lot of my fights would end up like just me holding someone's hair and um yeah just launching a few uppercuts from the car park <laughs> that's funny that, that, um if you could only you choose to. sorry sorry if you could if you could choose only one martial art to learn what would it be Ooh, um wrestling would that be considered a martial art of course of course yeah, I'd say if if I could turn back the hands of time, I would have I'd loved to uh, have wrestled as a base and as a kid. Um, but I love striking and I love the the art of striking uh, and all the different like styles and 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 things you can have. So I like yeah, I love Muay Thai obviously. But yeah, if I could, I'd, I'd love to have like a wrestling base. I think. Yep, yep. I love Taekwondo. We're a fan of Taekwondo, but um, of like, like recent years, like I really love the the balance and the technique of a lot of the kicks because I love to kick and I wish I could pull off a lot of those kicks. Um, so it's something I've actually been incorporating, like just different styles and different um different targets and things like that for kicks. Um, I'm really into it at the moment. So uh, broadening and adapting. With, uh... like, have you tried working with that? Uh, is it? I can't remember the first name. Van Roon, this guy. Um, oh. He's a Taekwondo guy, right? Yeah, yeah. He's he's uh, he helps out the team enormously with like a lot of different uh, techniques and how to incorporate it into into MMA. So yeah, yeah I'll, I'll yeah I work with I work a lot on a, my spinning back kick and. He's away right now on holiday with his family, but he'll be back like in a couple of weeks. So I look forward to like getting back in with him for cool. sure. I'm going to have a chat with him actually. I've lined him up for a chat as well. <laughs> so it's cool. 
Hey, yeah. um, hey, um, I've got some silly questions to ask. Uh, someone gives you an elephant, you can't sell it or give it away. What would you do with it? Um, I'd take it up to my mum's farm and um, and breed it and yeah, just love it and look after it. I think elephants are so cool. I'd love to own an elephant, but I just want to make sure that they've got everything they need, like environment in their environment. Well, be happy because like I lived in Thailand, city, and that made me so sad. So, mm-hmm. yeah. And just like make sure, like dedicate my, my whatever I had in my life to like making sure that elephant had like the best life possible. <laughs> cool. uh, compare yourself to an animal. What would it be and why? Oh, a dolphin or a or a buffalo. Why is that? Um, because a dolphin is one of my the dog uh, has always been one of my favorite animals and i just love that they're so intelligent and so beautiful and eloquent and elegant I, I, and the way that they move and just such beautiful creatures like i said and then the water buffalo because they're so loyal and solid and they they love their pack and um yeah they're, they're just they just work in a really good team. They're the great team animals, um, and and they're strong and and uh, yeah, like really scary when they when they go to fight. I so, saw they, I saw some, uh, sorry, go on. I was going to say I saw some beautiful dolphins in the Bay of Islands over there uh, when I came over. So beautiful, man. Yeah, yeah and Pai here and stuff and up north, yeah. it's. Oh, and like the um uh yeah I, I haven't been there since I was a kid like but I, I I've I've swam with dolphins and marlins and and gone whale whale watching and stuff like that it's beautiful. Cool. Next question. Well, Describe. My- <laughs> Sorry. So- yeah, I need to go back up there. I'd love- yeah, should do it. Should do it. Hey, describe the purpose of MMA to someone from another planet. The, pur- the purpose of MMA, uh, I think just that's just human entertainment, really, like seeing two humans locked in a cage going at it. Like, I think it just dates back to, you know, the Roman era and like how that was. I think it's just purely for entertainment <laughs> and the people that do it aren't all there in the head and a bit crazy and they like commit the, their life. I just think that's just yeah we're the people that aren't quite right in the world but <laughs> we seem to uh yeah drawn to that kind of lifestyle <laughs> last, last silly question uh would you rather fight 100 duck sized Francis Ngannou's or one 10 foot tall size Francis Ngannou one 10 foot tall Francis Ngannou uh- a thousand of those things would be, yeah, that don't in all different ways. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. So that's the end of the, the questions that I had. Just one more serious question was, uh, what's your plans for 2022 and the future? Uh, 2022 would be the PFL Women's Lightweight Champion. And um, then I've got one more year with the PFL. So this this will be like, a big couple of years for me um and then um yeah look I I have a love and a niche for boxing and that's something that I've really wanted to explore and um do before I finish fighting so that's definitely something that um is on the horizon and cards for me so I will um I'll I'll address that after I finish these um this season but um yeah that's something that's like in me that i want to want to pursue for sure cool awesome jenna well uh thanks so much for your time and and wishing you all the best for 2022 and uh, the pfl league and then also with your future aspirations for boxing and uh yeah i'll uh, keep in touch and and uh support you awesome i appreciate it toby and and great to finally uh, get in and speak with you properly um so yeah thank you very much for your patience Mm -hmm. and and good to Great. Thanks, Jenna.